Saturday morning, time to kick off the experts program, and our tech expert, Luis Alvarez, is joining us once again. Hello, Luis. Hello, Mark. How are you today? Doing good, and uh, boy, what a nice uh, weekend we're having. Of course, we're still not out of the rainy season. No. Man, this weather is just, this first three months of the year have just been incredible as far as yeah, wind that, and storms it, and everything. It's crazy. We're over the drought. Our reservoirs are over full. I heard from a friend of mine that uh, Nascimento and uh, San Antonio down south are back to where they were pre-drought. In mm-hmm. fact, they've had so much rain that they've had to drain water from both lakes a couple of times. Yeah. So that's something that hasn't happened in a long time. That's right. Yeah, I heard that uh, with uh, one of the unfortunate things is that, um, well, this isn't what's unfortunate, but the two reservoirs in South County are in different watersheds. So they fill differently. And Nascimento, larger than San Antonio, will fill first. And years ago, there was an idea to build an inner lake tunnel. It would be gravity fed because Nascimento Nascimento is at a higher elevation than San Antonio, and Nascimento would get full instead of releasing the flow to the river, then it just goes out to the ocean. They would divert that through that inner lake tunnel and fill San Antonio. And then if they had to lower San Antonio, they would release that into, into the river. But that project, which uh, originally was supposed to be a $10 million project like 40 years ago, for a variety of reasons, mostly regulatory and so forth, has never been built. And unfortunately, Fortunately, when we get a situation like this, we can't take full advantage of all yeah. of the water, you know, all the rain and everything and the runoff and, and all that that's filled Nascimento because we don't have anywhere else to really put it. Yep. So that's too bad. Because now that project is like over a hundred million, two hundred million dollars, and then it gets into who's going to pay for it and how much are they going to pay. And, and so it's just uh, sometimes, unfortunately, in California, we delay so long in doing something that we, we create a situation where when it comes time to affect the solution, we find that the cost of it is so huge that then that yep. becomes an impediment to doing it. So I don't know, you know, one of these days we're going to have to, <laughs> we're going to have to get some common sense uh, figuring these things out and, and hopefully make these systems work better. But uh, yeah, I am happy that we have the rain and we have more water than we've had in the past. I'll knock on wood for that. There you go. Me yeah. too. Hey, we got a couple interesting things going on here today that we want to talk about. One is uh, Microsoft bringing this chat GPT technology to Word, Excel, and Outlook. And then the other thing has to do with Chat GPT itself. This is the fourth edition of yep, what GPT-4 can do that, that the first one can't. But let's first off start with, um, we'll start over with uh, what Microsoft is doing with uh, the GPT technology exactly. Yeah, so if you're a subscriber of Microsoft 365 and, and most of the people now get their, uh, their, you know, their Word and Excel through the subscription model that used to be called Office 365, now it's called Microsoft 365, depending Depending on the edition that you have, you'll soon see something called business chat that will be built into these uh, applications that will help you kind of streamline some of your activities. So some of the examples that I saw during one of the demos is imagine if you get an email from somebody that says, hey, Mark, let's get together sometime next week. When are you available? So when you read that email, all of a sudden there's this little pop up that says, hey, do you want me to draft the response with your available times? And you say, sure. And so it says, hey, Lewis, I'm looking at my calendar here, the dates and times that I'm available. And of course, you can edit that email, but it saves you the time of having to look at your calendar because ChatGPT is comparing your calendar to what the request was, and it's smart enough to know how to respond to that email. Or you can go into Word, for example, and say, I'd like to send a a letter of congratulations to my niece who just graduated from college back in New York. Can you write it for me? And it will draft a a very compelling congratulatory letter that then you can edit and finalize after it's been done. But it's amazing what you'll be able to do once you have ChatGPT integrated into your applications. Well, so this is something that I'm sure that a lot of business are going to want to invest in because as we look at issues with literacy, with workers, where Mm -hmm. uh, business correspondence can be a real problem for a lot of businesses, that they've got people, salespeople or other frontline people that are expected to draft business letters. And a lot of times, quite frankly, those business letters look like they were written by someone with a third or fourth grade education. And so having a program that could actually draft a professional letter with uh, the correct punctuation and grammar, I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of businesses are going to want to sign on for this kind of thing. Yeah. And imagine you could do things like have a standard way that you want letters to be done in your business and chat GPT edits everything that's being created and makes sure that the letter that is being written by maybe an associate in a law firm adheres 
to the you know the corporate standard and and will call out anything that deviates from it. So this can be a, a very powerful tool for business, and I think for students and and people that are going to school that are looking for help with uh, you know grammar and things like that, it'll just be a step above what you can get now on mm-hmm. Word and in Excel. I mean, I think it's going to be a great tool that uh, will let you do more complicated formulas that you may not even think of because it can help you think about about how to do this stuff. But it's all thanks to the fact that chat GPT is now being integrated by Microsoft into pretty much all of their services. And it's happening at, at, a, at a rate that really is phenomenal when you think about it. We just heard about this in December and all of a sudden it's starting to pop up everywhere. Right, right. And apparently they're on GPT-4. And what are some of the things that GPT-4 can do that the previous edition couldn't? Well, it's, you know, GPT-4 is a lot smarter just in general, uh, as you can imagine, but also it does things now like it can ingest video or can produce videos. It can also create websites. So there was one example of somebody who basically drew on a piece of paper what they wanted a a web page to look like and fed it into GPT and it spit out the code required to build that website. So as allowing people to do things now that before you would have to maybe some sort of data engineer or somebody that can produce that sort of work. Now you can just ask chat GPT to do it for you. And I think it might put a lot of people out of work here pretty quickly if it continues to advance at the pace that it's doing. (laughs) Well, we're going to have to keep an eye on this thing. Hey, before we go, I've got one other thing I want to mention to you. Maybe you saw the story the other day. A couple of weeks ago, you and I talked about this do not pay this robot lawyer that helps people fight traffic tickets. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I saw a story on Gizmodo and it's been repeated a few other places that a class action lawsuit has been filed against do not pay saying that the startup misleads consumers by peddling quote unquote substandard legal docs and provides unauthorized legal services. And the person that brought the lawsuit says, hey, you can't practice law if you don't have a law license and a robot can't be licensed to practice law. It has to be a real person. So have you heard about this? I actually heard about the lawsuit because a lot of law firms are concerned about things like what we were talk- just talking about, chat GPT, being able to peel off a lot of low level work that they do that actually generates a lot of revenue for them, like filing claims or filing lawsuits against uh, spammers and those sorts of things. And so they they want to nip that at the bud as fast as possible because they're afraid that this will become commonplace and before you know it, it'll be too hard to fight. But right. I don't think they're, they're going to be able to get much traction because quite honestly, if you look at the disclaimers that uh, these guys use, it's, it's pretty hard to, to argue that they're peddling something that's consumer doesn't know know what they're getting into. Well, I note here that one of the things that the lawsuit is citing is a do not pay customer review in which someone reportedly tried to use the service to dispute two parking tickets. They ended up paying more money because the company didn't respond to a summons from the court. And then after trying to cancel their account, the the customer was still charged a subscription fee by do not pay per the lawsuit. Well, it'll be interesting to see where this goes, but uh, you can very much figure that the California bar or whomever it is that's representing the legal industry in the state of California that's helping to bring this lawsuit. They're very concerned because they're looking at it like, boy, there's a lot of billable hours our business yep, could exactly. lose here. <laughs> right? so, yep. This is going to be a substantial a titanic shift in a lot of that low-level work that has been done by human beings is going to shift over to automation. And, and we'll see if those folks shift over to higher level, you know, more valuable work, or if they decide to go do something else. Be more tort lawyers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 All right. Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, has been our guest here on Power Talk. Online, it's alvareztg.com, at alvareztg. That's the Twitter handle. And Luis, the toll-free number for the iTeam. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM. That's 866-784-8326.